transcranial magnetic simulation, how does it actually work? So transcranial magnetic simulation is using a device that uses magnetic pulses to change the way the brain connects. Now, this has been around actually for quite some time, but over the past 10 to 15 years, its popularity is rapidly increasing. Now, there are ways that it's currently being used in the United States, but then there are ways that you see within the research that it's being used in Europe and other things. And so even though the most common thing it's used for is depression, I don't want you to think about it as a psychiatry tool. It is more of a neuromodulatory tool. Okay, so once again, neuromodulatory or neuromodulation. So brain modulation is what it does. So as the brain changes, you either can get better function or worse in function, right? So if you suffer a concussion, traumatic brain injury, or stroke, your brain function is going to go down. But there's other things as well, right? So if you get your brain to be better, you're going to be less dizzy, less foggy, find words better and things like that. So let's talk about how transcranial magnetic simulation works. So once again, it's a neuromodulatory tool. Now, what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna talk about this from like a depression and anxiety standpoint. So let's be clear, there are many different ways to address depression using TMS. Now, one of the things that's done is you'll stimulate here on this left side, so the left dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex and make it connect better. So the way that happens is the pulses are done in a rapid manner with a break, okay, depending on what you do. So I like theta burst stimulation. It's a very rapid pulses with about an eight second rest, and then it does it again, okay? And that's done over three minutes. Now, when it's done in that manner, here's what it actually does within the brain. It tells it to connect better. It causes the release of neurotransmitters such as glutamate to stimulate the receptors to connect, to make long-term connections. Also though, TMS has been shown to cause the release of growth factors such as brain-derived neurotrophic factor, BDNF which also is a player. But another cool thing, when they looked at the research, they found that TMS can also reduce inflammatory chemicals. So we do know that there is an inflammatory hypothesis of what causes depression as well. So that's your one side, right? Is rapid firing with a little break, rapid firing with a little bit of a break, that causes the connections in the brain to become more connected. Now, the cool thing is, that can actually be used for concussions. In strokes, they've done it. They've done it on the injured side to try to increase function with whether it's speech, whether it's arm movement, leg movement, okay? Now, on the other side of the brain, the right side, that's where most of the anxiety protocols are used. Now, with that side, the focus on TMS is to get the brain to calm down and to not be connected strongly. So there's two different ways to run that treatment. The most common way is a, you know, as you can tell, it's much slower. It's a longer process. Mm -hmm. Now that tells the part of the brain to let's not connect as much. Let's release GABA and have some inhibitory influence on that part of the brain. Now, the other thing that can be done is this is newer research, but it's just a really quick rapid fire. So instead of it being, like I said, on the left side where it's fast with a break, this one just, just, it just goes really fast. And it does that for 40, 50 seconds, depending on the protocol. Um, that also can help dampen that part. So over firing, we're just going really slow, causes the brain to really inhibit itself and not connect as strongly, thereby helping with anxiety. Now let's go neuromodulatory, right? even though that's what that is as well. Let's go back to stroke. So you can either super excite the side of the brain that's been damaged, or you can inhibit the part of the brain that is healthy. And they've done that as well to say, okay, you know what? Even though your arm's like this, they'll actually fire the right side of the brain, which controls the left, and they'll inhibit that part that's responsible for that function. And they'll actually notice improvements with it. So there's a lot of different ways to use TMS. Um, 
in the research is just growing and growing and growing. Those that are only using it for one thing, either that's all they like to do, or they're just not staying caught up in the research because it really is an exciting therapeutic that can be used for so many different things from autism to ADHD, to depression, to anxiety, to insomnia, to, you know, even there's dementia research and other things like that. I hope you found this information useful and you have a better understanding of how transcranial magnetic stimulation works. Ultimately, remember, it's helping the brain connect better. And sometimes connecting better means let's facilitate better connections or the other part of connecting better can be is you're actually connecting too strong. Let's, let's have you chill out a little bit. And that gets the brain to a better spot. If you like to work with me, here's how you can contact me and follow me for more information as I will keep doing these videos on a variety of topics, not only transcranial magnetic simulation, but other neurological based things that influence how the brain functions.